Hello folks and welcome to another screencast regarding uh, anatomy and this particular screencast we're going to be looking at motor units and muscle contraction in particular the neural pathway. When we're talking about neuromuscular system we're relating that to the nervous system and the muscular system hence neuromuscular and in particular we're looking at both sensory neurons and motor neurons. Now to begin your notes with this it's probably a very good idea to draw a motor neuron which is the picture on the screen. You can draw it a bit simpler than that. Um, the key things to label in a motor neuron are its nucleus, the axon which is sort of the middle section down to the terminals and the axon terminals which are also known as motor end plates and that's quite important as you move forward with what happens with muscle contraction. As we mentioned we've got a couple of types of nerves that we're dealing with. We've got sensory neurons. Now sensory neurons are nerves that carry information from our skin um, to the spine and to the brain and back again. And so they might give information about surface temperature or if we're sweating, etc., etc., and carry that to the brain so the brain can respond to help cool us down or wick sweat away from, from the skin and into the atmosphere. However, for this screencast, we're going to be focusing on what we call motor neurons, and motor neurons carry information from the CNS, the central nervous system, to our muscles and back again. And we're particularly interested in the messages they carry to the muscle fibers to help them contract. Muscles can only contract when stimulated by the nervous system. And we're looking at three basic contractions that the muscle can perform once it's stimulated. And these contractions you will have covered in the muscle fiber work earlier in the ASPE syllabus. So these are isotonic contractions, isometric contractions, and isokinetic contractions. This is where the exam questions uh, will test you on the neuromuscular system. So we're going to start with questions about its structure and role in terms of a motor neuron or a motor unit. Very common questions. So this is an important section to make you notes. Motor neurons, as it says there, are specialised cells that transmit nerve impulses to a group of muscle fibres. So we've spoken about that already. That's what they do. The motor neuron will attach to a muscle fibre at what we call a neuromuscular junction. I'm going to explain that in a moment, but that's a key phrase, neuromuscular junction. At that neuromuscular junction, this is where the motor neuron will communicate the messages sent from the brain to the muscle fiber through nerve impulses. Here is a good picture of a motor unit. So a motor unit is the motor neuron and a muscle fibre. That's very critical to write that down. Again, if you want to alter your image of the motor neuron earlier on and add a muscle fibre in, this is what we mean by a motor unit. And as you can see there, we've now got what we call a neuromuscular junction. And to show you that in a bit closer, it's where the motor end plate, so the end part of the motor neuron, is attaching to the muscle fibre. And we have this section called the neuromuscular junction. In order to make a muscle contract, we need something called action potential. It's a positive electrical charge inside the nerve and muscle cells. The way to think about this is a branch of electricity flowing to a muscle fibre. It's not quite electricity, but imagine that it is. And that's the easiest way to imagine this working. So this action potential, the electricity, will be conducted down the neuron and into the muscle fibre. And the action potential transmits the nerve impulse, so what we want to do with the fibre, down that neuron and into the muscle fibre itself. And it's sent as a wave, and it goes from the motor neuron head down to the axon, down to the motor end plate, so the end part of the motor neuron before it touches the muscle fibre. 
We've got a problem though. We can generate all this action potential, so all this electricity and impulse, but there's a, there's a tiny gap between the end plates of the motor neuron and the muscle fibre itself. And that gap is something called the synaptic cleft. Very important statement. It's a gap between the neuromuscular junction end plate and the muscle fibre, as stated there. Our electricity, so our action potential, cannot cross the synaptic cleft without support. And the way we help it cross is by using a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. And acetylcholine, which we'll come on to in a second, is essentially a fluid that helps conduct that electrical charge into the muscle fibre. So as soon as acetylcholine is secreted into the synaptic cleft, into that gap, we can move the electrical charge into the muscle fibre. And if we secrete enough acetylcholine from the body into the synaptic cleft, and we've got high enough action potential, so the electrical charge is high enough, muscle action potential is created. That means the muscle can contract. And this creates what we call a wave of contraction down the muscle fibre. Now, this is quite a lot of notes and can be quite complex to most of you. So I think the easiest way of showing you this is by using an image. So in the next slide, I've got an image as to what happens for an order to a muscle to contract. So hopefully this will explain what I've been speaking about a little bit more clearly. And if you want to draw the image, that might be quite useful for you. Okay, so we've got a mus muscle, uh, sorry, we've got a muscle fibre at the bottom and we've got a motor neuron. So together, motor neuron and muscle fibre, on your screen you now have a motor unit. Don't forget that, those two are together. So to recap what we've been discussing, the nerve impulse starts at the head of the motor neuron. So we're going to conduct that, that nerve impulse to the muscle fibre. That nerve impulse will travel down the axon, the middle of the motor neuron, and it will reach the synaptic cleft. So we're imagining this wave of electricity going down the motor neuron and to the synaptic cleft, that gap. Once the action potential, the electrical charge, reaches the end of the motor neuron, and the gap, you can now see the gap on the screen between the muscle fibre in orange and where our arrow is. At the same time, acetylcholine is then secreted into that gap. So that fluid will be secreted into the gap and that helps that electrical charge go into the muscle fibre. The electrical charge must be high enough for it to be conducted into the muscle fibre. And at that point, the muscle contracts and pulls. The last thing you need to know about the neuromuscular system is that we have something called an all or none law, and that relates to what we've been discussing. It is simply this. If the motor unit receives a stimulus and creates enough action potential, the electricity, that reaches a high enough charge then all of the muscle fibres in that motor unit will contract with the same force. So that muscle will contract with the same amount of force as the charge that's reaching it, if that charge is high enough. However, if the action potential isn't high enough, so that electrical charge isn't strong enough, then none of those muscle fibres will contract and the muscle will remain still. So that is the all or none law. Please make sure you note that down, that's really important. Okay, again, thanks for watching. If you need any more support with this or any more topics on A-Level PE, please head to the I Speak PE channel on YouTube. Don't forget to go over this video a few times because it is quite complex how this works. Um, and I'll see you again next time.